Disclaimer. Although no vulgar language was used in this video, the lack of profanities is well compensated for by the absolute futility of its content. What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. The topic today is going to be common sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, common sense. Yeah, you know, this has to be probably the one video that I'm the most unprepared for. <laughs> And it's not for lack of preparation, but it's an overabundance of information. It's very difficult to make a video about common sense that is inclusive of everything that philosophy has to offer on the subject. And probably the, the quote that I've used the most, there are two quotes that I use a lot. One is by Mark Twain, when in doubt, tell the truth. When in doubt, what? When in doubt, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah. If you're in trouble, as I used to be as a young man, um, and somebody asked me a question, I didn't know what to say, just tell the truth. There's another yeah. expression. The best lie is the truth. The best lie is the truth. There you go. It's always <laughs> such a pleasure having you here because even your face has an intonation of mischief. <laughs> but my second favorite, and perhaps I would say, I don't know which one is my favorite, but the two that I use the most is that one. And the other one is um, common sense is the least, com the least common of the senses. Mm -hmm. I usually say that in passing. As in, I'm talking to somebody. Right. And that was something that was said in, in 1726 by a writer named, uh, by the name of Nicholas uh, Amherst. And he wrote a, mm -hmm. a satirical text, a book, uh, titled The Secret History of the University of Oxford. And in it, he said, and I quote, there is not a more uncommon thing in the world than common sense. So that's where the term comes from, 1726. If you're watching this and you wanna take something from it, a nugget of information, if you may, uh, there you have it. Today, uh, we're gonna be talking about common sense. the dictionary and I was, I was as I said many times now unfortunately the I repeat myself this is a trauma perhaps from childhood <laughs> because it, unlike people who are watching this video now we had to go to the dictionary and it was horrible you had to go you know alphabetical order to this day I have a great deal of difficulty finding things alphabetically in order and um, you had to find a word so now here's where we like to go. We go on Google Dictionary and um, the definition of common sense, which is a noun, it can also be an adjective. Um, it's good sense and sound judgment in practical matters. Hmm. Good sense and sound judgment in practical matters. Mm -hmm. In 1530, somebody defined common sense as Ordinary understanding without which one is foolish or insane. So this, this other definition says people who lack common sense are foolish or insane. I don't want to um, bring up my issues to the uh, forefront of YouTube, but my wife, I told her, she said, what is your topic tonight? And I said, common sense. And she said, you are going to be talking about common sense. <laughs> what was she trying to tell you? I want to know. <laughs> she, 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 she's from Queens, New York. She doesn't try to say things. She says them. 
but I, I think maybe more than one person out there watching this may relate to my experience where their partners really believe that we don't have any common sense planning. Mm -hmm. As, you know, we shouldn't be uh, profoundly impacted by this. We know now that it's the least common of the senses, right? Um, now, this is something interesting. We're still working on the definition because the dictionary always leaves leave me wanting. Um, According to Gary Martin, who is the author of Phrase Finder, it's a wonderful website, by the way, if you haven't tried it, you're looking for a phrase, who said this phrase? You go in there, you plug in the phrase, and it tells you who said it and what, right? According to this guy, and this was founded in 19, 1995, so not too long ago, common sense is, but good practical sense, the natural intelligence that is believed to be available to all rational people. Give me wow. one, right. I was saying, I don't think common sense is uh, always rational. That's, that's, that's one of the, the points. The definition that. said that, but I think sometimes people think that what, what's rational, it could lack common sense. Correct. It might seem rational on the surface, but if you had any common sense, you would realize it's not going to work. Right, do you have any, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Do you have any examples that you would like to share? I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Well, right. you know what? In thinking of what you just said, Tony, see, I, I always, my mind always likes to play these tricks on me. So, so it's, I think it's kind of possible that different groups of people can have different common sense, right? So you can, let's say if you have a, you know, a group of people that in the global scope may be a little bit under average, their common sense would be different than, you know, anybody else's common sense. Or, or hey, here goes a, a, a little poke. There's Republican common sense and there's Democratic yes, common yeah, 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 yeah. sense. We don't want to know politics. We, we don't and want there's a big difference right there. Violation. No politics. Yes. Yeah. No. No. Uh, not, not to talk about politics, but I think we can we can all agree that, you know, I think all Republicans would say, "Hey, that's just common sense." We'd be saying everybody has their, their own common sense. Right. I think that they're they're Violation. almost grouped. It no depends politics. on what group you're you're referring to in a way. That's that's kind of what's toying with my head right now. So think about uh, it. I know, mean, I will add something to that. Uh, we, we wouldn't all agree on what, what the same common sense is. Well, another, another, if you want to take that a step farther, I think, mm -hmm. another step, I mean farther, maybe backwards, right? But another step is the idea that everybody thinks that they have more common sense than their next person. That is, I think okay. that would probably be true. <laughs> some people may think that. Not everybody. Some people may realize they don't have common sense. They could be very, very smart but street smart, they're not. And they, they just don't seem to have common sense about everyday things. Correct. You know, a benchmark of lacking sense, usually heard by our partners, is that doesn't make any sense. I hear that often at home. <laughs> you know? Or, oh, that makes sense. Those will be the two ways of knowing within the, la the English language that you have or you lack all common sense. But mm -hmm. so, so far what we have is something may sound rational, but, but lack common sense. That's, that's, and, and Tony's definition, you know, is, or addition to the definition is much more objective and open-ended. We, yours is um, that common I would sense say mine is, is subjective. Group. It's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, it's subjective because the different groups would, the different common groups, if you, if you have, you know, four or five people and they have the same sense, right. then to them, that's their common mm -hmm. sense. My takeaway is that people think, everyone thinks that they have more common sense than others. And so we have think, three definitions. Right. I don't think so. I don't know. Some people may think that about if they have more common sense. Well, my, my way but, of thinking yeah, is... There may be lots of people who don't think they have a lot of common sense. Well, my thinking is if you found yourself in your, in your lifetime, um, 
saying, well, that person lacks all common sense or doesn't, doesn't have any, any sense. And way more frequently or often or more, more times, right? Then you said that about yourself. Wow, I don't make any sense. Then what I'm saying is not wrong. Hardly ever do I hear somebody say, wow, I don't make any sense. Someone may say sometimes, that's an illuminated being, I think. Um, sometimes I lack all common sense. Sometimes I don't make any sense, do I? But hardly ever. But it's much easier for most people, I think, for the vast majority of people to say that person doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. That's so ridiculous, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's a neutral point. What I was reading furthermore was common sense is sound practical judgment concerning everyday matters or a basic ability to perceive, understand, and judge that which is shared by nearly all people. That's kind of, that's what we were saying. Since right. they're shared by all people. Shared by all people, well, that, that goes against the different groups having different perspective on. All people within a group. You go before we leave, and right. I think that then, all then, in a group, oh. Within a group, right? So, for example, your example of, of of your wife making that, taking that jab at you, I'm sure all our wives would probably laugh and say, "Ah, no, none of us have common sense. None of the men have common sense." Right? Men don't make any sense, and some men might say the same about women. Uh, now, this would make the conversation very uh, interesting. <laughs> probably gonna have more followers, right? But, yeah, it can uh, get a lot more combative, that's for but sure. According to philosophy, in general, there are two types of common sense. Mm. The first type is uh, of common sense, is, or good sense, can be described as the knack for seeing things as they are and doing things as they ought to be done. The second type is sometimes described as folk wisdom, folk wisdom, signifying unreflected knowledge not reliant on specialized training or deliberative thought, meaning it's just general wisdom, right? Um, again, when we look at the definition of things, we are, I am always not pleased by what I find. It's limited, it's extreme. Um, and so we go to what we know best and what we appreciate, what I appreciate best, which is philosophy. Um, but today I would like to do is a little bit different. I would like to um, talk about some things that I found about common sense that are more common knowledge that, and see what you guys have to th say about it, what you think. The first one is that common sense is something that pretends to be universal, but it's deeply contextual. I would agree wholeheartedly with that. I think that supports my subjective view of yeah. common sense, absolutely. I mean, if you really think about it and you think a little deeply about it, because again, it, you can have, uh, here goes another kind of makeshift example. You can have, let's say a bunch of what uh, may, maybe the grand scheme of things people may call nerds, right? You can have a bunch of nerds that like Star Wars or comic books. And to them, it would be, you know, great to dress up and costume play and and you know but then you can see a, a bigger group of people looking at these you know so-called nerds and say oh they got no common sense why why is that guy walking around dressed in a costume in public i think that's more like Halloween. you're talking about more like prejudice um, about, <clears throat> you know, well i think there's a so fine called. line i think there is a fine line because is there any, is there any um it's the fact that both of us are wearing matching flash shirts Having to do with what you're saying. <laughs> what the hell is this? I'm asking myself the same question. And the second no, thing is, but common sense. I think that it's mostly observing children. Hmm. You know, um, something I lost your picture. Go. Uh, you know. When I tell when I tell my my child um, and my stepson when he was little too, um, go get me water. Where from? The fridge. 
you know, oh, a good example is that they, um, somebody at, at somebody's house, somebody said to, to a kid, um, can you go see the wine is in the, in the truck? The kid wine came back. And the person said, and? Where's the wine? Yeah, it's in the truck. I mean, so, 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 okay, so here's the deal. Right. This is correct because my this was my daughter, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the person started laughing, but the, 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 the dilemma was, is she right or is she wrong? Because she wasn't asked to go and bring it. The right. Was it it was insinuated. To see if the wine is in the truck. So she went and she checked and she said, yes. Common sense, perhaps the unwritten rules of mm -hmm. operation, will dictate that this young person should get the wine and bring it. Or better yet, once the person is asked such task, the person young or not will say, do you want me to bring it? Or just look, mm. right? But yeah, right, common sense. I um, have another one. I used right. to have this debate with a woman I worked with. I used to say, if I put something down that was incorrect and I found it, myself, not reasonably fast, and corrected it, that I didn't make a mistake. It was corrected, I, I didn't make a mistake, I fixed it, I didn't consider it a mistake. But this person used to say, yes, you did make a mistake, <laughs> even though you fixed it. It's not a mistake if I fi if I right. If you caught the mistake and you fixed it, then it's not a mistake. You erased the mistake. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which, is, which is more common sense? My my thinking or her thinking? Well, hmm. I think that there too is, is divided, and we're gonna get into the philosophy shortly. But it's kind of what you were saying, or something that may seem rational, but doesn't make common sense. You know, um, you know, depending on your breaking too, right? Right? If you break uh, something, that some things are are more irreparable than others. So if you make a mistake and then you repair it, it doesn't matter. Still, you know, if know. right. So I guess hmm. there, there are some variables in the answer. Um, the Japanese, in certain parts of, of Japan, they paint with gold the cracks of anything that breaks. Mm -hmm. so they say that the beauty of the object is in the in the in the marks of the things that the object has been through. So they view mistakes as something wildly different from the way we look at it. You know, Bob Ross used to call mistakes, um, beautiful mistakes, I think, or something like that, right? Remember, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, the guy with the afro. <laughs> we, don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. <laughs> but, so we, that guy. but we are in agreement that it's, <laughs> it's purely contextual. Absolutely. All right. I agree. In, the eye, in the eye of the, of the beholder, the thing that, that a certain group of people is likely to bond based on the shared idea of what common sense is. For example, I am a conservative. So I share friendship with a lot of people, but um, I have a particular group of people with whom I share an idea, a general idea of what common sense is. Somebody walks towards mm -hmm. 7 Eleven and you're outside instead of going in and, you know, letting the door close behind you, you open it, you hold it open for the person coming. To, to me and to a group of people, that is common sense. You right. do that. Sometimes you get it, you know, and then I, I guess it's something that is taught because you teach your children common sense the way you interpret it. But the, the next thing yeah. is, it was at the and beginning. And actually, I'm sorry, before you go on to the next thing, Juan, just to kind of reinforce what you're saying, um, you know, common sense also, Let's be honest, it, it can be not just within different parties, different groups, but different uh, countries. You know, what, what certain things that are common sense to an American uh, are not common sense to someone from, you know, the, the Caribbean or to a person from Japan. Yeah, right. there could be gra great differences of common sense. Great differences. Um... For sure, yeah, it's cultural, it's contextual, and you know, culture being a contextual marker and all. For sure, mm -hmm. you know, there's so the second point is in a book called Common Title Common Sense, a Political History, um, published by published by the Harvard University Press um, in 2014, so we're getting closer to the present, by a lady named Sophia 
Rosenfield. And she defined common sense as um, those plain self-evident truth or conventional wisdom that one needed no sophistication to grasp and no proof to accept precisely because they accord so well with the basic common sense or intellectual capacities and experiences of the whole social body. All right, so let me break it down because it's, it's, a, it's a big ball of, of, of words. She refers to common sense as self-evident truths or conventional wisdom that one does not need to be sophisticated to grasp. Hmm. Meaning, it's obvious, it's in your face. Common sense. How many times do we hear parents or hear ourselves as parents saying, it's common sense. If you, if, the, if you put the glass on the edge of the table, it's going to fall. And it's, if it falls, it's going to break. Tony right. will say, no, maybe it doesn't fall. I mean, if it falls, maybe it doesn't break. And that's Tony. <laughs> you know, we, Tony and I, for example, we, we had, um, we challenged common sense before at the act of There was if you said, it may break or it will break. Right. <clears throat> difference. It's um, common sense that it may break. It's not common sense that it will break. Right. Well, but okay. This, this see. <laughs> you started it. Mr. Kirkland, you are out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. The whole trial is out of order. You started right. it. The, the thing is, right, <laughs> it, it might break. Um, but when we're upset at, at, at our kids, we speak in definitives. We ask questions that start with why, which is accusatory, and we say things like will break. This will break and it will fall. Meaning, uh, we've been there, we've done it, so for you will. Yeah. All right. So she defines it as that. She says that um, common sense is a plain self-evident truth or conventional wisdom that one need no sophistication to grasp and no proof to accept precisely because we, of course, they of course so well to basic intellectual capacities and experiences. The idea is that, according to Sophia, is that um, there are things that are so basic, there's just common sense. And I think that we, if, we, if we put our brain to work, we can think of a few. I would like people who are watching this, the one person who's watching this, to put comments of examples of basic self-evident truth that, um, that this person says construes common sense. That common sense is organized among those, right? Um, now, Moving on to the next point. C.S. Lewis wrote, oh, that's great. It's better to send a boy to school than to have a private tutor for him at home. For if he is kept away from the herd, how will he ever learn that census or sense, which we call communists? Hmm. Common, common. So what C.S. Lewis is saying is children must be in the context of others to acquire common sense. Absolutely. You should send your child to school. You know, right now, for example, we don't know what's gonna happen. Next year, we might not have a school. Today. Um, or as I call it, free, free childcare, right? Um, so, <laughs> but you don't know what's gonna happen. We got an email. That's a, that's a common perception, yes. Yeah, we got an email. But he so, says that. Tony, he says that the common sense. He says the children need, need to be um, influenced by others. It is better to send them. It's better sense. to send the boy to school. I don't think that's common sense. No, well, I think what what he's saying, or at least what I gathered from it, is that common sense is learned in, in a group setting. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's generalize in a, in a group setting. setting, right? The more people that are in that group, the more common perceptions that are created, which I, I can see that. With the, I don't disagree with that, that premise, except that I don't think it's common sense. It's more of a rational, um, it's more of an opinion. It's no, common, no, no. He says that common sense can only... Common sense because 
um, there could be kids with their parents picking up all the common sense things. Right, the, but then the, the, the family unit is the group. Is the group. Right. Yeah, I, think right. He, group. He, I think what, what he aims... I don't think saying that it, they, they should go to school instead of being tutored, I don't think that's common sense. I mean, it, it's an opinion. Well, in the quote... Common sense. It's, you could disagree with it, or you could say there's too many instances where it might not be true. I don't think that, okay, so here's the deal. I think that nothing can be taken as an absolute. There can be exceptions to everything. But in the larger grain, in the larger scheme of things, I think he's correct in saying that the, the, the meaning of it being, uh, we learn from being with others a lot about common sense that we don't necessarily learn on our own, alone. I think he doesn't mean staying at home, homeschooling, even though it says that, I think what he means is, a child home outside of the context of other children his age or her age. And that you learn common sense, the unwritten rules of interaction, what is acceptable without being said. You know, Actually, I, I agree with the premise of that, but I just said, I, but I don't think that it's common sense. It falls under the category of common sense. That's all I, I mean. It's not, it's not obvious enough to fall under uh, common sense. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Hmm. Let me ask you. Well, can can you dive a little bit deeper into that, yeah, Tony? I, so I, I want to try to understand let me, what. Let me what, ask you a question. We we're starting to sound like the view. You know how the view they talk about each other. <laughs> <laughs> Daughter. Here's, yes, you know what? Wait, 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 wait. No, that's not true. Hang on, hang on. Tony, do you think that common sense is learned, or do you think that um, is inherited? I think it's learned. I agree with the premise. I said I agree with it. I agree with the thought, the premise. I just don't think that that falls under common sense. That's sort of a, um, it, it's a, a rational opinion, yes, but I, it's not so obvious that it's just common sense. Right, he says it's better to send the boy to school no, than I to have- want to send my kid to, I don't want to send my kid to school because of various different reasons. Uh, I wouldn't say you could say they're not following common sense. Then, no, then that, 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 like, that, that, it may not be the right decision, but I wouldn't say that it, they're, they're falling out of common sense. I don't think you're going to anything, anybody's opinion or any statistic, you're going to say, if it seems to back it up, that that's common sense. I don't think so. Right. Well, you know what? It has to be I, um, so obvious. That's what they seem to say, that it's an obvious thing that doesn't take any education or any, any real learning. It's just uh, an instinct that to know that it's, it's the right thing. Right, he's saying, um, well, let me read it again. Um, Quintilian says, it is better to send a boy to school than to have a private tutor for him at home. For if he is kept away from the herd, on the congresses, how will he ever learn that sense which we call common? Meaning, the his his I think he is stressing the the word common in common sense. That to have common sense, to develop common sense, to preserve common sense, it needs to be done with practice and learn and maintain within the common aspect of it, which is many common meaning people, right? That's what he said. I don't I don't disagree with him. I'm just I just don't think that falls under the uh, and, and, of common sense. That's all I'm saying. And the implications of that are many there's because many, there's too many ifs. Too many right. ifs. So yes, well, here, in, general, that, in general that's the right thing. It takes a group of some kind to, to learn, obviously. He's but saying I, when you I take a kid away from school. I said obviously, you, so maybe it is. If I said obviously, then I'd do this stuff and say it. Well, he says it's simple, which is if you take a child away from the context of, of others, 
and you teach them in instead of sending to school, you teach them from home, the child will not will be learning the subject, and will not be learning common sense, which is learned within the context of other kids. Now, hold on, let's make a pause here. Today, all children in the world are learning from home. Mm -hmm. That's it when doesn't mean that they won't have any common sense. Well, mine is like not showing much common sense. They may still develop <laughs> from their parents, from their brothers and sisters. Right. So right. that's true. Yeah. Now, let me throw this this uh, philosophical <laughs> curveball at you guys. Like I disagree. I don't disagree with what he said. I'm only disagreeing with you that it that that falls under common sense. Well, that's what that's what the author says. Common sense. That, that author is saying one way to develop common sense mm -hmm. is to get it to a group. Like well, I'm not saying that that's common sense because I'm saying that that's one way which the author looks at it. Oh yeah, that's one. No, it's one. Yeah, way. No, no, I'm not saying that one the phrase way. itself. I'm, yeah, it's not not saying, a, I'm not saying the a, phrase complete. itself is common sense. Actually, as a matter of fact, I should have framed this by saying, I should have said, uh, none of these statements do I um, deem to be common sense, sensical. I just think, well, maybe one or two. Uh, I just want to talk about things about com that, that are being said about common sense. I don't necessarily agree that they are commonsensical. This guy, you know, the common sense is something that pretends to be universal, but it's deeply contextual. I don't agree with that 100%. I don't disagree with it either. But I don't, I don't look at it in terms of, is, is this commonsensical or any of these commonsensical? I'm just saying these are things that are common sense that appeal to me. And I thought, okay, we should bring them to the table. Um, the other one that I mentioned was that uh, their self-evident truth or conventional wisdom that we don't need to be sophisticated to understand or to know, to discriminate. I'm not saying that that, that is um, a fact. I'm saying somebody said that. What do you guys think about the thing itself? All right. Weeby, you have something right. to say about it. And I, yeah, I'm well, again, so far, I mean, then again, I, 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 I understand I'm probably more of an agreeable person. I usually try to see the sense in, in what everybody says. Okay. But that being said, um, I wanted to throw this little, politi this little uh, philosophical curveball, which is, uh, you know, we're, we're deconstructing common sense and, and what it can mean and where it comes from. And, and it came to my mind that, you know, common sense, I, I guess to support the theory of common sense has to be, let's call it uh, grown or matured in a group setting. And part of the way that that is matured in a group setting is because, for example, um, not everyone will make the same mistakes and not everyone will learn the same thing. But in plain view of a group, others will see what happened to you and what you did. And, and that becomes a common knowledge. Um, for example, to try to put it to a more con concrete idea. Um, Let's suppose many, many, many years ago, and you have the cavemen, and you know, and all the cavemen are walking, they're in the winter and they're walking on top of a lake. And one caveman goes out in the lake and falls through the ice. It isn't common sense that, oh, the caveman went and walked through the ice. He was just a poor slob who happened to be walking on the thin part of the ice. But all the others, who saw him fall into the ice would start to formulate this common sense. Hey, don't walk too deep into the ice. You can fall through it. Th does that make sense for how I'm kind of deconstructing right. it in my mind? Right. And I think that's probably where a lot of this comes from and, and where common sense originated. Correct. That's a good example of common sense, I think. Yes, very good example. There's but a group of guys while sitting around the campfire. Tony. Going back to what you said, that different cultures and different places would have a different idea of co what, what's common sense in specific instances. Yet common sense is supposed to be sort of a universal thing. Because we said that, because we said that it's subjective and that it could be, common sense could be different in different cultures. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not universal. I throw out the premise, 
possibly that there really is nothing, there is no common sense. There's nothing common about common sense. Nothing com there is no common <laughs> sense. If every, if every opinion and every, every could be subjective, could be different, if different people could come up with a, a different uh, a solution or opinion, it's not universal. It might seem obvious in certain instances, but uh, to say that there's common sense, maybe there is no such thing as common sense. Okay. Either, either you're rational or you're not rational. Okay, so, so that's a good segue to philosophy. And I think at this point, it's only fair that we do that because I wanna answer your question or your position that, that common sense doesn't exist pretty much. You know, it's so subjective that it, it's really, you know, non-existent. Yeah. I wanna answer, right. It, that's, is that a fair assessment of what you're saying or? Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, all right. Yeah. So I wanna talk about, I wanna, I wanna talk about a big guy in philosophy. And, is Aristotle. And before, before I, I kind of went, I want to share some facts about him. Um, it is said that nobody was as brilliant and intelligent um, as Aristotle, meaning that no one more brilliant or intelligent than him ever walked uh, on this planet. And that, I read that one and I thought uh, it was very, um, I, I <laughs> wow, that's a statement, huh? That is, right. okay. He was a student uh, of Plato. We mentioned Plato in a, in a, when we talked about silence. He was a student of his. Um, and Alexander the Great was a tutor by Aristotle. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, he became a student of Aristotle in 343 before Christ. And he took much advice from his teacher. Uh, Aristotle was a man um, very much ahead of his time. He had uh, new ideas on how to study the world. And he dissected, he was the first person to dissect animals. Back in those days, the Greek didn't do that. And I was reading online, Greek philosophers and educators of those times used to do all their work in their mind, thinking about the world without observing it. They wrote about philosophy as they imagined things, not as they saw it. All right. <clears throat> and then even though Aristotle made some exceptional discoveries, during his lifetime, he wasn't always correct. According to Aristotle, the heart is the center of intelligence, not the brain. He also thought that the gender of goats depended on the direction of the wind flow. So he has some ideas that he, one will say, if, if one didn't embrace Tony's idea, that sometimes he lacked common sense, right? Based on the lack of knowledge, okay. But, you said that um, that then common sense doesn't exist because it's so subjective. But Aristotle <clears throat> defined common sense as the common sensing of things, which means, and I probably, probably do better job by reading it, but he referred to the way the things, the ways in which we use all of our, our senses, hearing, seeing, tasting, right, tact, to perceive the world and create reality that, that are the same for all of us. For example, behind me is a guitar. And that's a guitar to me, that's a guitar to you, um, Weeby, and hopefully for you too, Tony. You know, it's, so according to Aristotle, common sense are the things that through our per, um, elements of perception, if you may, um, are construed as a reality that is the same for all of us. He said that we share that with all animals. And I'm gonna go ahead and read. Um, Aristotle was the first person known to have discussed common sense. And he described it as the ability with which animals process sense perceptions, memories, and imagination in order to reach many types of basic judgments. For example, whether you're a giraffe, a lion, um, an iguana, <coughs> myself, Tony or Weedy, if we see fire, we only come so close because we all share the same perception of that as something that can hurt us, can burn mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So Aristotle said that. In his uh, philosophy, only humans have real reasoned thinking, which takes them beyond their common sensing of things. 
Meaning, you are correct, Tony. I think. According to Aristotle, we humans attribute the term common sense to things that are too subjective. We could, however, attribute it to the things, only to the things that we can sense through our senses, through our eyes, our ears, our taste, right? Like fire, um, danger, things that might be dangerous to all animals, not just ourselves or our animals, but to everybody. And that's, you know, that's one of the, the, the ideas. Common sense also has at least two specifically philosophical meanings. One is the capability of the animal soul, proposed by Aristotle, allowing people and other animals to distinguish and identify physical things. For example, if I am walking with you, Weeby, and you, Tony, we're walking down, down a, um, a very narrow path. And then there's a wall in front of us. Common sense to the three of us will dictate that at some point, if we don't stop, what will happen? We're going to hit the wall. Right. I think that to want to make common sense about anything other than that and things of that nature is a mistake. And that's what I agree with Tony. I think I that. I agree with that. The things with your basic perception. Basic perception. Things with Physical. your eyes, your ears, your feel, with your touch. Yes. To use, to use to use common those sense things, outside of those things are obvious could be considered common sense. Any concepts that require more thinking uh, is more of someone's opinion. It's never common sense. It might you might think it's common sense. You might think it's common sense. i if I don't agree with you, I'm not going to think it's common sense. Right, right. That's how people get divorced, you know. But the uh, the thing is, we were not mentioning that I can put my hand on the fire. Right. It's not going to hurt. Right. That, that's common sense. That is common sense. <laughs> Otherwise, this whole thing is so funny to me. But, uh, you know, I hope my daughter is not listening to any of this. Uh, then she's going to use this against me and everything else. <laughs> but uh, all that, you know, common sense is subjective, Tony says. But, um, so if you're watching this and you're a minor or not, no. just keep your hands out of the no, fire. not bringing the wine back was not a question of not having common sense. It had nothing to do with hearing or seeing or anything. Right. Which is well, an opinion that she should have brought the woman back. Right. Should have thought of it, the but uh, that's not common sense. Well, here, what, what, what would we call someone that defies common sense? Well, e even in a good way, look at a fireman. A fireman defies the their common sense and runs into a house I don't in think flames. So. See, I don't think so because even a fireman might at some point look at a fire that is so big that says, eh, no, like wildfires. Right. Just send helicopters with water because I can't go in there. Common sense. I'll die. Well, they common have sense are among firemen. Right. <laughs> Every incident would be different. Like for, they have equipment, uh, they have, you know, certain things they wear. Right. Can so. acknowledge if it's the degree of the fire, right? What the chances are of surviving and getting the person out. Now, I remember in the army, they showed us pictures of Audie Murphy, how brave he was to throw grenades into a tank and stuff. <clears throat> Believe me, when I saw it, I didn't think he was brave, I thought he was crazy. <laughs> he looked crazy. I don't think he had any common sense whatsoever. Huh? Uh, uh. So, so wait a minute. Does, does that lead that's lead right. way into? I, I know there's a common question that everyone says: Can common sense be taught? Um, be taught? In this yes. case with the fireman, yes. I, I'd say, like with the example of the fireman, the fireman is taught how to survive and protect themselves against fire with the equipment. So it can be taught, or well, even for example, more basic. it's so contextual, guys, because you know. I'm not great with computers, but people who are great with computers assume that everyone knows what they know. So they're <laughs> automatically annoyed when you approach them and say, well, that's common sense. No. All you do is uh, press uh, Control, Alt, and Delete, and you, you access your task manager. That's like common sense. But how you is know that what? common sense? 
Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. If, if I may interject, you just reminded me, and I hope my cousin doesn't hate me for this, but you reminded me of a common sense uh, example I just went, I went through many, many years ago when I had my first computer, mm-hmm. my first IBM computer in my home. And one day my cousin shows up and he says, hey, yeah, I've been hearing about this internet. Uh, you know, can you show me? Can you teach me? You know, I, I want to play with it. I go, sure. I turn on the computer. I, I set him up to Internet Explorer and I give him the keyboard and the mouse. And you know what he did? To this day, I, I say it. And he grabbed the mouse and he goes, how, how do you use this? How do you use this? I, I, I've never used this before. How do you use it? And, and again, at the time, it was like, it's common sense. Everyone knows how to use the mouse. But he did not. Correct. Cool. Yeah, so I'm saying like it's subjective. Okay, the second. Okay, so the second thing. So the first one was, was your opinion that it was common sense. Right, it was your opinion, maybe. Jesus. Yes, absolutely. Have some mercy. But it was those. to a lot of people at the time. <laughs> but the, all under back to the groups. Back to the groups. I don't think right. that's all under common sense. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you thought it at the time. <laughs> well, it reminded me of because I'm a computer guy. So at the time, it it was common sense to me. And to right. computer people, that the oh, that's how you use a mouse, but it obviously wasn't common sense okay. to a okay. non-user. That's right. But, right. Uh, Mac products are supposed to be um, intuitive, and I think this is the farthest thing from intuitive they ever encountered. Huh? What is okay? It? Mac products, you know, like an Apple Mac like an Apple computer are supposed to be in, you know intuitive. And that means that they're like an, an extension of your common sense and it's easy to use. They're not easy to use to me and they never will be because they haven't been in years. Okay. But so okay. the first one. Right. A Google Assistant now. Yeah, there you go. It's only $40. He said, he said, she, knows, she knows everything. It's easy to use. You just right. ask her a question. She knows almost everything. If she doesn't, she says, I don't know that yet or I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, she's talking to you now. Yeah, Lynn is helping you. That's, ask, that's your assistant right, right there. Oh. <laughs> ask her. Lynn's going to ask the Google Assistant what's common sense. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's do it. Go ahead. Oh. Hey, Google, what is common sense? Oh, we can't hear it. Hey, you guys want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. Just enlighten us. Hey, Google, tell us about common sense. Should have mentioned Thomas Paine. Here's the definition of common sense: good sense and sound judgment in practical matters. <laughs> with okay. music. That's exactly, <laughs> so that's exactly what we said. You know, and I said it with Google stuff. Okay. The second special use of common sense of the term is by the Romans, and the Romans were highly political, and they politicized everything. They politicized God. And they even politicized the philosophical construct by Aristotle of, of common sense. And it says that the second special use of the term is Roman influence. And it's used for the natural human sensitivity for other humans and for the community. So they made it about etiquette, about um, boundaries, about um, how we relate to others. It wasn't any longer about the things that we all know by sensing things like fire. It was about, it's common sense that I don't go, I don't go around killing people. It's common sense that I don't go around selling my, my body, right? And obviously they used that to create order because there was very little in the Roman Empire throughout. So mm. the, the Romans are responsible partly for how we have prostituted um, the term common sense. It should be, I, I, I remain of the idea that common sense should be limited to fire and things like that. Hmm. We thought that, but there are moral issues that seem like common sense. Right, <clears throat> right, right. It's more than what we sense, touch, and see, and hear, because what happens with um, abusing minors? Right. Right. And then again, somebody may say many years ago, it was normal. Children who were 12, my daughter is 11, for God's sake, I couldn't even imagine the idea. Uh, but my, somebody may say, when somebody was 12, they were married already. 
in Victorian times or before that. Hmm. Right? But today it's common yeah. sense that, well, why, ooh, why? How could a person do that? It's common right, sense. The children, why? So it's interesting. I think that, you know, the most important point is that we're arriving nowhere. Well, topic. there's different criteria, like thou shalt not kill. But you kill in self-defense, you kill in wars, and- uh, Animals. Yeah, for, for hunting. hunting anyway. Right. For food, so yeah. um, is that we think of that as common sense? I don't know. Yeah, the the um, I like I like really like what Aristotle said. He, he was talking about common common sensing as opposed to common sense. He's like we can only call common sense the things that we can sense commonly, really commonly sense. Meaning the things that are no different to anybody mainly the laws of physics. What we stumble upon, what we touch, what we can feel, that which can hurt us, right? Right. Um, and then the term is the form. Now, as far as literature goes, and, and by the way, in philosophy alone, uh, we will talk about this forever and mention many different characters. There was a group and a movement of philosophy, Scottish philosophers, um, that refer to themselves as common sense philosophers and they existed in opposition to the philosophies of Rene Descartes, John Locke, David Hume, and all the people who were um, of the idea of subjectivity. They were of the idea of ideas, saying ideas have such a power that that which we call common sense is really subjective, just like Tony is saying. And um, these um, Scottish philosophers d disagreed sharply, disagreed sharply. And uh, of course, I don't remember their names off the top of my head, but what here is, um, Dougal Stewart is one of them, and Thomas Ray is the other. Um, the final one is Adam Ferguson. So if you're watching and you wanna research it, um, please go ahead. Uh, they lived in the uh, 1700s, late 1700s. And they said, no, there is a certainty. There are things that are common sense that are physical and moral too. And, and they said, anything else leads to disparate theories. Theories are just disparate, absurd, crazy, where everything counts. There is an objectivity to things. And common sense uh, is something that is very much real and is um, discriminatory for sure. Some things just don't make sense. That's what this three philosophers said, and they gave way to a new form of philosophy, more recent philosophy to this day, correct? Because a lot of people say, use some common sense. Right. But in literature, uh, when we get to the literary part of researching common sense, it's frustrating, really frustrating, because everything about common sense is played justifiably, so by a pamphlet, an American pamphlet. Well, yeah, that's debatable because it was written by Thomas Paine. I think we're all familiar, right? Mm -hmm. And it was called Tale of Common Sense. So when you will literature of common sense or the literature of common sense, you see nothing but that. And, and there's a reason for it. In preparation to, um, in proportion to the population of the colonies at that time, we're talking about um, 1775 to 1776, um, I learned that when I took the citizenship exam. That's how I became a citizen. Um, but in proportion to the population then of the 13 colonies, which was 2.5 million people, not too many, it had the largest sale and circulation of any book published in American history. Hmm. Well, American history, yeah. At the time. As of, right. Uh, no, no, <laughs> even now, and even now. As of really? 2006, it remains the all time best selling American title and is still in print today. Mm -hmm. hmm. I was listening to it while I was showering. They have the audiobook on YouTube mm -hmm. because it's historical, and I think historical has no right, basically, to even to have access to it. Um, it's quite well written, very well written, very, very, um, even though um, this is from many, many years ago, you can understand everything that, that Thomas Paine said. And Common Sense is a pamphlet written by Thomas Paine in 1775. To 1776, advocating independence from Great Britain to the people in the 13 colonies. All right. 
there's some things that were interesting about Thomas Paine. One of them is his death, because he wished to, um, my understanding is that he wanted, his wish was to be buried in a Quaker cemetery. And the Quakers said no, I guess, uh, fearing the propaganda that, that would bring, and they didn't want their place to be uh, uh, desecrated by people who are fans of Thomas Paine, right? So they said no, they turned him away, and, and he, he sat in, in a box, pretty much. And then he was transported to England by, um, by a private per, by a person, an individual, um, who died when he got to England, and Thomas Paine lived in the box in that house for a while, the body, <laughs> oh, the body. And then the guy's son ran out of money and, and tried to auction it. So it was this very sad ending, you know. Um, I don't know if anyone cares about it, but he wrote a very prominent pamphlet. If you have it uh, sometime, read it. It's, it's not long and it's recommendable reading. Then he talks about government. The things, you know, especially in these days today that everything's so uh, unclear, he paints a very clear picture of the purposes of government. Not a big fan of government, as I am not either. So definitely Thomas Paine was not a big fan of government. Um, hmm. Tyranny and all that. But anyway, so as far as literature goes, look no farther, you know, for looking at Thomas Paine. All right, today I feel it was very vague, very ambiguous, very open-ended. I think the, uh, the beauty of these conversations is that they're not scripted, per se. I have some information to go off of, but we don't, um, we don't have a script. You kind of no. bring it to the table and discuss it. Um, my takeaway is uh, from this conversation is that common sense is subjective um, whenever you get beyond uh, the things that we can all perceive the same, and usually having to do with physics. That beyond physics, or that which we can um, touch and feel, um, it becomes a very um, dubious and subjective matter. The moral part of it, created mainly by the Romans to control the people, definitely whole way today. I, I'm sure people watching this right now will be very critical and say, well, how can you say that? And you think that this is wrong and that is wrong and that is right. You know, and then Tony says, well, killing is wrong. You shall not kill. The Ten Commandments. Yet, people kill. And it's acceptable. They get medals for killing. Oh, yeah. you know, we love our Every troops, day. for sure. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, you know, we, uh, um, we, uh, we get medals for killing the bad Bad people, yeah, but the bad people that were killing mm -hmm. who also get a medal for killing us. <laughs> right? So it's contextual. Um, and the other thing is that it's definitely learned. I do think that some people are born with a propensity to have a little more common sense about things. For example, some children are less prone to getting burned twice than others. I think you're right. Yeah. I'd even go as far as to say, you know, maybe the new change, the new thing should be that true common sense is limited to everyone's common senses. Touch, taste, feel, see, smell. Correct. Um, and I like your example of the guy falling through the ice because um, the example you gave, the first guy was not a, lacking common sense. <clears throat> the other people that saw it, if they went out and walked on the ice, you would say they didn't have common sense. Right. 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 They, they oh, visually that. saw this guy walking onto the ice and said, hey, I saw what happens when you go out into the ice. And that Don't is do it. Too, uh, I think because you, you can feel the ice on your feet, you can hear the noise of the ice falling into the ice. And then again, somebody uh, might say, however, Tony. however, you said some people are born with more of it. What about the person who perceives, I'm not going out on that ice because what if it breaks? With never having seen it happen, that right. person was born with more perception than the average person. Yes, yes. Or has subconsciously heard that elsewhere at some point in their miserable life. To they could have heard it from a, from a story. Something that happened to another village. Yeah, but, but, but nonetheless, have the, have a, um, I agree with Tanya, that, person, that person's mind registered that 
in the part of the brain that says, Has, have some common sense, that's dangerous. You know, um, the other side of the coin then would be people who um, have such a keen sense of common sense that it doesn't make sense anymore. Like my mom will say, out of fear, usually out of fear, will say, don't, um, I'll give you two examples, don't go out in the rain because you'll get sick. And then she will say, go ahead and shower. I say, yeah, but if I get wet, then I get sick, right? Because to her, common sense, it was that if you get, but perhaps a better example, and with this, we can probably close the conversation on common sense. And of a, an example of a way in which sometimes when we really think we have common sense about something, um, it can really um, work against us. As you know, to fly anything, you need height and speed. A friend of my father, who's no longer with us, used to fly, fly um, uh, a fumigation airplane from farm to farm. He was a veterinarian. And every time he left the farm flying his small airplane, his wife, out of sheer common sense to her, and, um, and a great deal of care, will say to him, buy love, be safe, fly low and slow. that we exist here in South Proper is to talk about universal subjects um, of which nothing much is said about. So I hope you enjoyed today. Thank you, Tony, for joining us again. Um, Willie, thank you for being here, brother. Thanks for having me. And uh, those of you watching, the one person watching, please leave some comments. Um, again, I don't think this is going to help anyone in any way or more shape. Those who have very little common sense in the um, Aristotle type of way uh, will continue to have it, and those who don't will continue to lack it. But maybe you had some fun and you learned something new. Either you have it or you don't, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>